Nocturne Hall presents an original audio drama intended only for an adult audience. Philip! Damn, it's freezing. Philip! Oh, mm. there you are. <laughs> what are you doing down there, silly goose? Oh, never mind. <clears throat> Come inside. <clears throat> You'll freeze out here. When the fountain stopped, I heard gentle strumming. Love, it's 30 degrees. The fountain was never on. Shh. She's at it again. Can't you hear those tender plucks of gold? You've had quite a night. Time for rest. Where they gather, the ladder must be near. You won't find it sitting down. Let me help you to your feet. My, your hands are ice. Climb with caution. Prudent. The rungs lined with swords and nasty hooks will cut us deep. But there's just a balustrade of smooth stone. A beast lurks beneath, but pay it no heed. To rush will cut us to pieces. How about you come inside to warm yourself? Perhaps another glass of sherry would set your mind at rest. Have a seat near the radiator, and I'll make you that drink. Here, love. Oh, thank heavens. He's conked out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, what marvelous life. Devils walk among us, some just a mile north of the White House. Whether conjured or elected, they prey on the innocent all the same. Most won't even listen, so folks knock on the one door in the district of crime who will. DuPont Investigations. I never thought of my heart when man you taught me how to love again. It's you and me until the end. Oh, we'll paint this whole town red. Just the devils of the devils of DuPont. Just the devils. The devils of DuPont. This is the scourge. From Carthage, Part One. It's open. Mr. Summersby? You're not from CNP. CNP? Chesapeake and Potomac, the telephone company. You must not be from around here either. Wait, you're not another blasted reporter. No, sir, I'm Nigel Clemens, a claims investigator with Zegma Insurance. Although I admit, the story from the papers is why I'm here. You look familiar. Have we met before? I don't believe so. Come into my office. Would you like a drink, Mr. Clemens? All I've got is bourbon. Garbled line? No, nah, works just fine. Still, I'm having it disconnected after the evening star ran its gem of a story. Here you are. So, Mr. Clemens, let me give you some free advice. Watch out for dame reporters. They seem innocent enough. 
but they've got the sharpest teeth of all the sharks in the pond. I'll keep that in mind. Although I've found trouble with every dame I've met. <laughs> you can say that again. I wonder whether the paper printed the truth about your case. Oh, it was a hoax, all right. Big dummy me taking another macabre case. My father swore I'd make a fool of myself chasing after ghouls and goblins one day. But how come a fine fellow like yourself tracks me down after reading that rag story? Well, the paper mentioned you fancy yourself a scholar of the occult. Oh, brother, tell me this ain't another case. I'm through with it. I tell you through the whole funny business. After my last case, no decent person would hire me. No, sir. I'm ready to hang it all up. You see? But those might be new clients calling. Clients, schmients. I'm through with a lot of them. Most are rich buffoons trying to investigate the family fortune teller. Long gone are the serious clients. And you can forget anyone from the hill reaching out again. All the rats in Congress are getting tailed by my competitors. Sorry to hear about your dry spell. But I assure you, I have every interest in this case remaining out of the newspapers. Which outfit did you say you're with again? Zegma Insurance. Zegma? Never heard of it. Our office is in Zegma, North Carolina. Oh, that's Zegma. Sure, I read the new Empire State Building is just a scaled-up version of your big building downtown. They say yours is the tallest building south of Baltimore. The Steeples Tobacco Building. You don't sound like a Tar Heel. I'm from Richmond. My pa got a job in Zegma when I was in the 10th grade. Lured by the Steeples operation? Like most folks in Zegma. I can imagine. I suppose you know what kind of breed that plump white cat is from all their advertisements. It's a Turkish Angora. Ah, uh, but Mr. Steeples is the true fat cat. It just so happens I'm investigating the death of Philip Steeples. The old man? No, his son. I hadn't heard he died. No, th thus far, I've managed to keep it out of print. Well, that's quite a trick. It costs a small fortune, but the Steeples family can afford it. So you're in touch with the family? Indeed. My trouble is, the case is unusual. You're gonna have to give me more than that. Are you familiar with the Spanish Steps in Colorama? Sure, what about them? They found Philip Steeples' body on the pool patio of an adjacent house. It seems he fell from the roof and died from a harsh, blunt injury to his head. The trouble is, the medical examiner won't rule out foul play. What does his policy say about murder? I thought double indemnity is paid out all the same for murder or accident. But not for suicide or the decedent's gross negligence. Still, none of that's in play. How come? He didn't have a life insurance policy. Then why the devil are you working the case? Ah, uh, let me guess. The family wanted someone they trusted, so they tapped their local insurance investigator as their PI. I have taken the odd case from them. Whenever hired muscle couldn't get results. But when the news of Philip arrived, they recalled how we used to be friends. Used to be? He survived a nasty accident, but was never the same after. The family struggled to restore him to his former self, but his recovery proved complicated. Although his wounds healed, he feared the pain would return. Ultimately, he withdrew from the family, slipping away to Washington. So they pay you by the day or what? So far, just expenses. But Mr. Siebels isn't stingy. After Philip left home, the family took out a liability policy on him. They feared he might hurt someone. Sure, perhaps in another reckless driving incident. Uh, but the only one he hurt was himself. So it seems. Well, at least your company won't have to pay out on his policy. Mr. Summersby. Please, call me Torsten. Well, Torsten, I'm out of my depth in our nation's capital. And the steeples are expecting answers. And you haven't got any. Just a few clues. Well, whose house was it where dear Philip took the plunge? It belongs to Judge Krauss from the municipal court. But he and his wife are still vacationing in Portugal. So what do you figure the heir to a tobacco baron was doing there? That's one of several remaining mysteries. Did you visit the scene? It was my first stop. I can't say there was anything out of the ordinary, except he died on the wrong side of the property. Was there a right side to die on? Of course not. It's just that one could access the fourth floor via a stairwell. There's a rooftop gazebo and a terrace 
but it opens facing south. The Codman house is below, so we're talking a five or six story drop. But he fell on the north side. Right, but the northernmost roof line is aligned with the lower third floor, so not all that great of a height from which to fall. I'd estimate around a 30 foot drop. I see. So he did fall on the wrong side. It usually takes four stories for a lethal fall. But if he struck his head and bled out... That's the peculiar part. It seems he fell from a great height. Could he have crawled up and fallen? There wasn't a trellis or anything simple to climb, but I mean, he fell from a height considerably higher than that of the roof. I don't understand. The body wasn't there when I arrived. Just a chalked outline and smashed patio bricks. You telling me he smashed apart the bricks from less than four stories? Why, that is peculiar. We're still awaiting the medical examiner to complete his autopsy. But the detective who responded to the call reported upon the Emmy's initial inspection he determined most of Philip's bones were broken. Who phoned it in? Someone's dog sniffed out the body around six in the morning. He kept barking his head off till the owner climbed the ivy to peek over the high cement fence. Smart pooch. Once they saw the body, they came to the front and rang the bell. But no one answered, so they went down to Spanish Steps and used the call box at Decatur and 22nd to reach the authorities. How'd they identify him? Last year, the North Carolina General Assembly required all automobile operators to start carrying license listing their name and address. So that's how the police reached his folks. Philip's parents alerted his sister first, but their next call was to me. Once I agreed to take the case, I found their chauffeur at my door within a half hour. They reserved my train tickets at Raleigh Union Depot, but by the time I had finally arrived in Washington, Philip was on a slab. Who identified the body? I volunteered. For all his injuries, he was still the personable face I had known growing up. Just lifeless. Are his folks on their way? No. The steeples are too distraught to make any journey at the moment. They requested Philip's body return to Zegma once the medical examiner releases it. So, they tasked you with settling his affairs, too? No. His sister and her husband took the train down from New York this afternoon. They should be at the Mayflower by now. Awaiting some answers. And I've got few to offer them. Oh, care for another drink? Now, you said the dog owner hadn't any luck ringing the bell, but did Judge Krauss have any staff? Someone must have given Philip access to the premises. There wasn't a maid or gardener on the scene when a beat cop let me through to the pool patio. If they have staff, perhaps they took leave at the same time as the Krauses. About this pool, could he have tried to dive in and missed? No one in their right mind would try it. Was he a sound mind? Well, by the look on your face, I'd say you harbor some doubt. I'd be indebted to you if you could assist me with this case. No, you'd be in debt because I don't do favors, Nige. Look, I'll pay you two C notes if you come with me to his room at the Cairo Hotel. I stopped there just before I came to see you. I'm out of my depth. It wasn't the room of the young man I once knew. It's a goddamn oddball horde. Hmm, interesting. I've been called an oddball before. Maybe Philip and I had something in common. That's why I'd like you to take a look. Then there's more dough if you discover anything worth mentioning to Miss Barr. That the steeple's dame? Lila. Lila Barr. Who am I to turn down a gig? You're not what I expected. Uh, come along. The Cairo's just a short stroll. Sounds like it's at least worth a gander. Besides, we shouldn't keep Mrs. Big Smokes waiting too long. So I gotta ask, that case of yours. You sure you ain't a reporter? Come on. One investigator to another. Why'd you take the case? Because I'm a believer. Not in all things. But well within the realm most folks think unfathomable. So you honestly thought that little girl was possessed? I thought her parents deserved to have a PI check out the diocese track record on exorcisms. You think they'll still let you take a communion? They can keep it. I ain't a prisoner. But you believe in possession? Sure. As the day is long. But not in that case. No, the parents should be locked up. They had that poor girl under their own spell of self-delusion. Now her fate lies in the hands of a social worker. 
against a family as wealthy as Midas. The great irony is the press might be your only ally. So that's why you talked to that reporter. I thought she might show greater discretion if she understood the matter. Proved me the dummy. We don't have to stop at reception. I've still got a key. Good. Then this will be the quickest double C's I ever snagged. You might want to wait till you see the room. Darn. The elevator operator is on break. It is late. Stairs? Sure, but how high are we climbing? Just three flights. It's probably for the best. When they installed the elevators, I heard someone fell down from the top of one of these shafts. Ouch, when would that have been? Oh, some 40 odd years ago. Do you suppose the shaft is haunted? Oh, he didn't die. No, the fellow limped home and phoned a doctor to come around. Bananas. It's true, I swear. Philip's room is right over here. I don't know how to prepare- Judas Priest! He's been in Washington just shy of a year, but he managed to collect quite a library. Minus the shelves. Look at these towering stacks. Oddball Horde is right. I don't like it. Not one bit. What? The books? The atmosphere. It's tinged with malevolence. You a medium too? Nah, you don't need to be one to sense something wrong went down here. Come on, let's see what kind of wild lit we're working with here. Clairvoyance, thought forms, the etheric double, the health aura of man. All I can make of all this rubbish is Philip must have gone slap happy. No argument there. Still, there's got to be some common theme here. Anything by the desk? Just an underwood without any paper. He's got the Sunday Star open to F4, a hand-drawn map detailing John Wilkes Booth's escape route from Ford's theater. Keep looking. The next issue is from the 11th, open to B6. It's listing all the Sunday services. Something tells me he wasn't attending the Presbyterian Church of the Pilgrims. He was raised Methodist. Yeah. Still, I bet he wasn't attending Fandry Methodist either. He's got several bookmarks in this gym. What have we here? The Secret Doctrine by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. And this is just volume one. Oh, brother, we're in for a wild ride if you're studying this broad. Who is she? A corpse, thank the Lord. There's a newsletter stuffed inside. Here we are. The American Theosophist Society in America. Madame Blavatsky was a theosophist. The theosophist, in fact. A what? A theosophist. To be honest, I'm not sure what they believe. I bet I have some of their lit back in my home library, but they're an obscure bunch. I think they reinterpreted ancient religions, which is something I comprehend pretty well. What is their interpretation? Well, who's to say? We'd have to read all this muck. So, is there anything useful here? Uh, check the services on B6. What am I looking for? There ought to be a listing for theosophy. You're joking. Look for their symbol. An onk in the center of the Star of David with a swastika overhead. A swastika? Bananas. In an American paper? Son of a gun, look at that, you're right. Theosophy. They're listed right above the Presbyterian Church of the Pilgrims. That's a fine coincidence. And the swastika has been around a few thousand years before those Nazi bastards stumbled upon it. The Theosophists have two lodges in town. One has a service Sunday on the memory of past lives. Oh wait, that's April 5th. This Sunday's Easter. Ah, I opened the wrong B6. Although the Washington Lodge runs weekly classes at 8 in the evening, Tuesday is Blavatsky class. Oh brother, glad we missed hers. Hey, there was one tomorrow night. Every Friday, they run an elementary theosophy class. Perfect for newcomers. Where are they located? At 1216 8th Street Northwest. Well now, take a look at this gem hiding beneath Isis Unveiled. What is it? It appears to be a field medic's treatment ten. From the war? Let's peek inside. Ether, Stovane, Spartine. Any morphine? Nope, that vial's missing. Why'd you ask? Call it a hunch. Young Philip into morphine? Why else would he have the tin? 
Nige, I'm short on answers here. You're the one that grew up with them. Philip was in a nasty accident. He wound his brand new Lincoln Model K around a telephone pole near Troy. Spent months in the hospital. Was never the same after. You think he got hooked on morphine? Could be. I know he began acting erratic after his discharge. I didn't see much of him back then. But it wasn't long before he left home. Now when his folks came around to take out the liability policy. I see. Neat coincidence. Now we find a treatment tent missing a morphine vial? But I still don't get what drew him to Washington. Or what sustained his attention. This isn't exactly a bachelor's quarters. Not an inviting one, at least for the uninitiated. Are you suggesting he entertain visitors in this horde? I know dames who'd climb Kilimanjaro for a tobacco baron's heir. Let alone plot a course through a maze of odd books to arrive on his comfy bed. Anything's possible. Did you look around for any correspondence? I'd anticipate a few notes from home if you were here for so long. Just a letter from his mother asked him if he'd consider coming home for Easter. He'll be home all right, but not the way she envisioned. A telegram was sent Monday from the Belvedere Hotel in Baltimore. It says, called but no answer, ring yes or no, holding package. No sign of a response. Odd for a man to toss out all of his correspondence. Oh, Philip was always very secretive. Learned it from his father. Men learn all manners of sin from their fathers. Perhaps Mrs. Barr might know more. If I didn't know better... What is it? A false bottom drawer. Something's inside, too. You think Philip was running a racket? Maybe it's his ledger. Looks more like a diary. It's marked C-E. Let's take a gander. Oh boy, this handwriting is a challenge. It's not a ledger. I can make out a date for this entry. June 5th, 1919. Whoa, we lose power? Nah, it was just a flicker. Christ, I think that was a raven. Best if I take the journal. I've got a gift for deciphering difficult penmanship. Here, be my guest. Bathroom now. Who's that? I thought you had the only key. I do. At least, I thought I did. You got a piece on you? Never. Do you? Give me the toilet paper roll. What? Just do it. Here, now what? No, dummy. I want the cylinder. And give me your jacket. What? All right, here. Thanks. But now? Time for our friend to stare down the barrel. And if he's got iron? Then we rush him before he shoots. Bananas. You ready? Heck no, I'm not. On three. One, two, three. Whoa! Who the devil- Hands up, Buster. The devil's the least of your worries. DuPont Investigations is written by Mark Benjamin Langston and directed, edited, and sound designed by Bryce Bowen. Keep your ears in the 1930s by becoming a DuPont investigator. Access our private Discord server, The Inside Scoop, or explore Torsten Summersby's recovered case file by visiting nocturnehall.com slash investigator. DuPont Investigations The Scourge of Carthage Part 1 features Kara Turner as Irma Kraus, Ryan McLean as Philip Steeples, Mark Benjamin Langston as Torsten Summersby, Jacob Lohman as Nigel Clemens, and Joshua Hall as Calder Evans. The original theme song, Devils of DuPont, written and performed by Bryce Bowen, is available wherever you stream music. For individuals and families facing mental health or substance use disorders in the United States, listeners can call the free confidential national helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-H-E-L-P.